legislative process. That means by a bill that's enacted by the General Assembly and signed by the government. <coughs> For this congressional redistricting, the General Assembly is attempting to adopt a redistricting, a redistricting bill as Representative Palmer mentioned by the end of May. Never before has congressional redistricting been done during the first Friday recession following the census. Uh, General Assembly leadership put together the Joint Select Committee for the purpose of evaluating proposed maps, receiving public testimony, and making recommendations to the General Assembly um, prior, um, prior to April 14th. The Office of Legislative Legal Services will be responsible for preparing the bill that will hopefully become, or will hopefully be the product from this committee. The Joint Select Committee on Redistricting is here tonight to hear public testimony concerning congressional redistricting. That is Colorado's representatives and those districts of the United States House of Representatives. What the committee will not do tonight is hear testimony concerning the uh, state, house, and senate district maps. You will all have an opportunity to provide public testimony to the independent uh, reapportionment commission this summer uh, concerning the state, uh, house, and senate districts. So in redrawing Colorado's congressional <laughs> districts, uh, the General Assembly must comply with two basic legal requirements. The first is equal population. Colorado must draw seven districts for the U.S. House of Representatives, and each district must have its nearly equal population as practicable and shall justify each variance no matter how small. So after the 2000 census, Colorado was apportioned a seventh uh, seat, and so uh, Colorado's apportionment after the 2010 census remains in seven districts. So with 5,029,196 people in Colorado, each of the seven districts needs to include approximately 718,457 people. So that's the magic number, 718,457 people. Our current congressional district is uh, approximately two people. So I think we can get to equal, well we won't be able to get to equal population because that number is not visible by seven. So as you can see from your handout that you received, uh, Congressional District 1 needs to gain 56,418 people. And the surrounding districts, uh, CD7 needs to also gain a little over 40,000. CD6 <coughs> and CD2 both need to lose people. CD6 needs to lose a little over 79,000 people. And CD2 Excuse me, needs to lose approximately 15, a little over 15,000 people. So equal protection or equal population among districts is the first legal requirement. The second requirement is to comply is, is that the district <coughs> plan comply with Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act. That act prohibits the state from enacting a redistricting plan that results in the denial or abridgment of a citizen's right to vote based upon race, color, or status. It is unlikely that Colorado uh, will draw a plan that violates this law, but the protection of or the avoidance of dilution and minority voting rights is a factor that the General Assembly must consider. Now, that were the only piece of the puzzle we need to figure. We need to figure out equal population, <coughs> compliance with the Voting Rights Act. We could certainly draw several maps that would accomplish those, um, that criteria. However, there are other um, legal, well, there are other requirements or factors that the General Assembly would like to consider and have traditionally considered in redistricting. And those principles and factors are the preservation of local, county, and municipal boundaries, where possible, and the preservation of communities of interest, which can be any and may include ethnic or cultural interest, water interest, agricultural interest, <coughs> urban corridor interest, <coughs> this goes on. Uh, so in order to assist the committee tonight in designing a successful redistricting plan, the input that would be most helpful to the committee 
is testimony concerning the following questions. Number one, do the current districts, especially CD1, split any communities of interest? Number two, are there communities of interest within CD1 that need to be preserved when changing the districts to equalize the population? Number three, since CD1 needs to gain 